Okay, so the first thing I usually like to talk about is tile sets because that determines what your maps will look like. So if you go over to tools, database or F9 for the shortcut, uh, if you go down to tile sets here, you can pretty much create as many tile sets as you want. And each individual tile set can be used for different maps, right? So your tile sets are pretty much the pieces that you're going to use to draw your map. So let's go ahead and for example, pick number eight. So here you can name your tile set to whatever you want that tile to be. So for example, if it's dungeons, I spelled that wrong, but I'm just going to keep that. Yeah, you can name it. You could determine what type of uh, map it is. It could, it could be a world map or area map, right? here you pick your different tiles now there's a lot of ways to get tiles the game comes or pre-made tiles you could make your own tiles you could also buy some assets and then um, import them I'm using the method i showed in the last overview video with the importer right uh, so these are all your different tiles you pretty much uh come over here usually try to match these up especially if you have the dlcs right uh, and that will pretty much fill them in i'm not gonna go through all of them I'm just going to go through some, right? So that's how you would select what tiles you would be able to see, right? Now, if you look at the next tab over, you will see there's a whole bunch of circles, right? So those circles pretty much mean that you can pass through these tiles. Now, obviously you don't want to be able to pass through the water. So you could either left click or right click to change these. So left clicking will cycle it left and right clicking will just cycle it back right circle means you could pass through it x means you cannot pass through it and the star means you could pass under it right so it will be drawn on top of the character um, or events and stuff like that right and as you can see we are in passage that's why we're able to see the x's and the circles right now you can change this section to ladder to four-way directional passage right this determines what direction you'll be able to pass through on those different tiles. You can't really do that for these ones. So let's come over here to B. So what this means is you see the arrow means you could pass on all sides. A dot means you cannot pass through that way. You can only pass um, from left, right and up. So you could change it between a dot or, or an arrow, right? Ladder determines if something's a ladder. So you could come here and set it. As a ladder so what that means is when the player is when the player is passing over that tile they will pretty much face up as if they're climbing the ladder right you could also use that for the ropes a bush means when the player is standing on that tile the tile is kind of drawn on top of the player with a little bit of transparency counter just means that find the table so pretty much it's like uh you know when you walked up to a shop and you can talk to an npc over the table that's what a counter is that means these right here are tagged as a counter so me being the player i could stand right here and talk to this npc i don't have to be here now if this wasn't a counter i would have to go all the way around and talk to this npc so that's what that does right Damage floor means if you're standing on that tile, you will get damaged, right? And then terrain tag is just whenever you stand on this particular tile, your uh, the terrain tag will equal to six. And then you could use that to do a whole bunch of stuff, um, scripting wise, event wise, and a whole bunch of other stuff. You could copy this page from like a different game and come here and paste it here if you wanted to. You could add notes and stuff like that, all right? So now that you know how to set up your tile sets, right? And also if I'm looking over here, I'm looking at my, my microphone. Once you make your tile sets, let's say for example, we just made the dungeon tile set, right? And these are all the different tiles that we picked for that dungeon tile set. Two, let me minimize this. Okay, so that's your tile sets and stuff like that. We just made the dungeon tile set, right? So looking at, going back to your map editor, right? Let's switch over to the map mode which is this icon right here now we're seeing all of our different tiles in the top palette right which is this menu right here to the left that i'm selecting right below that you get our different tabs that we set up before that has all the different items that we need to get our maps made all the way at the right you will see an r 
the tab is for your regions, right? So your regions are pretty much, again, they're kind of similar to terrain tags, um, but you could use these, but kind of like similar things. For example, these regions, you could use them in order to determine what enemies spawn. If you have some uh, plugins, you could use it to determine where things happen or where things are activated and stuff like that. So these are pretty useful, definitely. Okay, so I know it might be a lot, but don't worry about it. We're gonna put everything together. So down here, you have your map tree and your quick access. Your map tree just shows all your different maps and how they're nested together right your quick assets are the maps that you visit all the time for me those are the main cities and the overworld right to make a new map what you would have to do is come down here to your map tree you cannot do it from quick assets you have to go to your map tree right click on so when you start the game you're gonna have this which is the name which is your project and you're also gonna have a map right you could delete that map if you want to, or you could start working on that map. If you want to start working on that map, all you have to do is right click on the map, hit edit. It will bring up the map properties and you could change all the different properties of the map. If you want to work with that map, right? If you want to make a new map, you could go ahead and just delete it. Right click on your game project, right? You could also right click anywhere um, on your map tree, but depending on exactly how you want the map to be nested you want to make sure you're clicking on the right map in order to make a new map and i'll explain that to you so just bear with me so let's make a new map call this tutorial map right so with the map properties you have your general settings your general settings pretty much include the name and the display name the name is the name that appears here on the map tree the display name is the name that appears in game when the player enters the map. Tile set is where you pick that tile set that we set up earlier. So let's go ahead and pick that. Remember we said we made the dungeon. So let's pick that dungeon tile set, right? Width and height is how big you want the map to be. Tile bait, um, tile wide. So it'll be 20 tiles high and 20 tiles wide. Scroll type determines whether if the map loops or not. And I'm going to show you exactly what that means. So just um, we're going to come back to the scroll loop. I mean, the scroll type when I make the map and I'll show you exactly what that does. Encounter steps is how many steps can the player take on this map before an encounter can happen, right? Although play background and I'll explain that later. Encounters is pretty much um, battles. So like an enemy being triggered. So like in Pokemon, when you're walking on the grass, uh, the chances of the enemies appearing. Auto play background music, pretty much whatever background music you um, pick is what will play when the player enters that map. Auto play background sound, the same with background music is the background sound that will play when the player enters that map, right? And it will continuously play unless you change it with events or a script. Specify battle back. So what this is pretty much is when you're having, if you're using the default battle system, right? This is the background of the enemy. I mean, this is the background of the battles that will happen on the map. So this is a dungeon. Let's find, why not? Let's use that demon castle. Oh, I just see demon castle. Yeah, it's a dungeon. Why not? So that's, so every time we encounter an enemy, the background for that battle will be that. Disable dashing means you cannot dash on this map. The player will be forced to walk, right? Now, going down to the parallax background. Now, this is where you set up your parallax. Um, so, for example, the images that display behind the actual map. Uh, this controls whether if it loops horizontally or vertical, and you can have it both if you want to, and this controls the speed. And this determines whether if it shows in the editor or not. Note is where you leave your different notes for yourself or if you're using plugins, you will put those plugin commands here, right? Moving over to encounters. Encounters is where you set up the different tr troops that will appear on the map. We're gonna talk about troops later and enemies when we talk about enemies, right? So you could, if you open up the troop, you could pick a troop. I don't really have any troops here. You could pick, you could pick the frequency of it. So for example, if this one is five and this one is nine, 
the one with nine has a more has a higher chance of appearing right um, and then you could make it so this enemy appears on i mean this troop appears on the whole map or a specific region id and remember we talked about those region ids over here so that's pretty much your map properties and how you set up a map so i'm gonna hit okay this is i'm gonna delete actually i'm gonna keep actually no i'm gonna delete this and come back to this when we actually talk about the troops so for now we're gonna hit okay right so as you can see this is the parallax that's being displayed right so let me go ahead and show you what i mean by the vertical loop so let's say we have this dungeon and we have a straight path going up that way and another one going this way let me put the player in the middle so normally if we play this as you can see it's just the map i can walk left up down it's just the map right see it's just the map it ends but if i enable this i can make it either loop vertical horizontal or both let's make it both just to show now when i play this i pretty much now have an infinite map that just it's infinite so it's repeating itself so scrolling back and if i go this way it's gonna be the same thing as you can see even though i'm clicking right it's technically left because that's where the guy is right so that's what that means now that you know how to set up the map i mean now that you know how to create a map and edit a map let's go ahead and actually show you guys how to make a map how to make a map 